Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. We are the HIT team and we were focused on solving task five, uh, which was provided by Miguel Monteiro. So um, our, our presentation is called Show Me Consistency, Increasing the Consistency and Quality of Annotations. So we all know that machine learning models have achieved outstanding results in tasks uh, even in the medical field. However, these models are data-driven and so uh, to have high quality models, we need high quality data. Um, so in this work, uh, we consider uh, the improvement quality of machine learning models taking uh, into consideration one of the dimensions of data quality, which is the consistency of annotations. The first question we asked ourselves were what causes inconsistency during data annotation process? Uh, one problem uh, that leads to inconsistency is the subjectivity in the data. So annotators are trained for the annotation and they are asked to evaluate uh, very specific characteristics of the images, which are used as indicators so that they can uh, make their final decision. However, these characteristics may be hard to quantify uh, in an objective manner. For example, uh, in the case of sperm morphology classification, uh, one relevant characteristic is the smoothness of the head which may be subjective and may lead different annotators to, to perform different annotations. Uh, we also verify that other problems that may lead to inconsistency are fatigue in the uh, annotator and lack of time. Um, so uh, how can we improve consistency? We can improve consistency on two stages of the uh, AI development pipeline. So in the data collection stage, uh, we could have uh, different annotators uh, make uh, annotations for the same images and then uh, assign to the image the annotation that is the most consensual one. And we can also define more objective um, descriptions of the characteristics uh, like smoothness of the head. Um, but in this work, we are more focused on the uh, data processing stage. So in defining algorithms that quantify consistency and use it uh, to improve the consistency. Of... Um, so before I uh, go to the, the experimental process, uh, I'm just going to introduce our problem. We have a multi-class classification problem, uh, a sperm uh, morphology classification. Uh, where we have only 216 images, where each one was annotated by one, an, uh, one of three annotators. Um, so uh, in our approach to measure consistency, we defined a consistency model, which is trained using the data and which makes uh, our reference uh, annotation. And so uh, our goal is to compare the consistency uh, of the annotations uh, provided by the annotators against these reference uh, that is given by the consistency model. And uh, with this, uh, we can evaluate consistency for uh, the samples uh, in, to, uh, to find inconsistent samples. And uh, we can compare at the annotation level to find annotators that are uh, more frequently inconsistent uh, with others. Uh, to, com uh, to compute this uh, annotation level consistency, we used uh, a Cohen Kappa score, which is a, a metric that evaluates the agreement between two parties. In our case, it is between the reference labels and the annotator labels. So uh, in this work, we are focused on developing this consistency model. Uh, as a first approach, we developed a usual deep classification network trained on the whole data. Uh, uh, and with this approach, we uh, conclude that, that the second annotator is the least consistent uh, with the deep learning model. As a second approach, we employ uh, K-Midoids clustering. So first we extract uh, latent features from the original images using an autoencoder. And then we use these features and apply K-Midoids clustering, where in each cluster, um, the annotation of the cluster is the majority of the annotations of the samples inside the cluster. Uh, and in this method, we observe that the first annotator is the least consistent. And finally, we have an ensemble of artificial annotators. So in this net, uh, network, we 
defines different classification networks, each corresponding to one annotator and data and trains with data from one annotator. So here the intuition was to obtain uh, labels uh, that are uh, obtained by the different simulations of the annotators. Uh, and so uh, with this method, we obtained uh, that the first annotator is the least consistent one. So uh, our work was to define consistency, consistency and to develop models to evaluate consistency. So now, how can we use this consistency metric? What is it for? So we can use it and in real world context to, uh, as a feedback tool for annotators in order to check if an annotation uh, made by annotator during the uh, data annotation process, if it is consistent with past data or an, uh, annotations from artificial annotators and uh, give a chance for the annotator to improve uh, its own annotations. We can also uh, give it as a feedback tool to, company, uh, to companies uh, where we can make an evaluation of uh, annotators and uh, check what are the least co uh, consistent annotators so that company executives may make decisions uh, about giving them more training or removing them from the pipeline. And finally, we can use them for developers. Uh, so uh, we can use the consistency evaluation to identify inconsistencies in the data during data preparation process so that the developer can deal with it accordingly. And we can also use it uh, as a loss function because it was obtained through deep learning. So it can be used uh, as a loss function to train deep learning models to make predictions that are consistent. Um, so uh, given the, this model, the next steps in this project were, would be to develop this AI model uh, that makes consistent predictions. Uh, and also we could also make uh, automatic detection of fatigue during annotation, which could be used uh, to evaluate or to remove fatigue in those inconsistencies uh, using causal models. And this is it. Thank you very much.